to Broadcasting Live from the School of Athens. This is Europe and the People Without History, everyone's favorite AP World History Review service. Today we're going to finalize our discussion of Period 4 in the College Board's AP World History Concept Outline by talking about Key Concept 4.3, which says, Empires expanded around the world, presenting new challenges in the incorporation of diverse populations and in the effective administration of new coerced labor systems. So go ahead and put that into your own words, and I'll be back with you in a jiffy. Okay, hopefully you wrote down something like me. Empires expanded and ran into issues related to their expansion. Hey, shocker. This seems to be a continuity in world history, so let's see how it happens in the early modern world. So, key concept 4.3 Roman numeral 1 says rulers used a variety of methods to legitimize and consolidate their power. So, here's how they did it. Kind of unique ways and not so unique ways. One of the things that is often overlooked because we don't usually think of it as a way of legitimizing rule is through art. You can see Emperor Kang Shi pictured to the right. He was a Qing emperor who used imperial portraits to, to show his... Uh, to legitimize his rule. The, if you can make yourself look awesome through painting and uh, through art, that is all the more awesome you are portrayed to your people. Uh, this was also done in Europe. The Medici were a prominent fa family that lived in Florence, and they were the ones who paid for Michelangelo to paint so, so many awesome things. Uh, they, of course, had him paint pictures of them often. So uh, you can see rulers using art to legitimize their power. They also use monumental architecture, which can be seen uh, through Ottoman mosques, which is uh, portrayed in the background of this slide. That's the famous blue mosque. It's beautiful, um, but also shows that the ruler has the power to build that, has the capacity to be an awesome ruler. Probably more famous than that is uh, Shah Jahan's Taj Mahal which is situated in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, which is uh, shows Muslim features on a mausoleum, but that mausoleum is in India. So you see syncretic, art, syncretic architecture as well. You also see them try to legitimize the rule through religious ideas. This is, I would say, best exemplified by the Aztec. The, the Aztecs who use human sacrifice, you know, ordered oftentimes by the emperor, uh, to legitimize their power. You also see the Safavid use of uh, Shiite, Shiite Islam as uh, a way to legitimize power. So rulers are using non-traditional ways uh, to, to legitimize their rule. Now, rulers also instituted different ways to in incorporate diverse populations. So they practiced... Um, they put in practice several ways to accommodate these religious and ethnic groups, as, uh, for example, which was discussed in uh, Key Concept 4.2's video, the Spanish Casta system. The Qing reinstated the Dalai Lama in the western part of China into Tibet, who oversaw a particular type of Buddhism but there's an element of toleration there. And you also see the Chinese use of civil service exams, which allow religious and ethnic groups that aren't traditionally Chinese a chance to become a part of the bureaucracy. In addition to, to that, emperors did uh, more common things like developed military professionals. The Ottomans' use of Christian boys to become Janissaries through their Devshir May pro program, um, and also samurai that collected sa salaries from the daimyo and uh, the shogunate in Japan. You also see that rulers uh, use tax collection systems to fund their expansion. Uh, important to, to note here, and we can wrap this back into key concept 4, 4.1, is uh, the Ming's transformation, the Ming dynasty's tra transformation in this time period um, to begin to demand taxes being paid in silver as opposed to goods. This is, of course, going to cause uh, a high demand in silver, and the Chinese are going to uh, look for it. And the Spanish have it, so this is going to uh, some, some, something that drives the sugar trade. Okay, key concept 4.3, Roman numeral 2 says, Imperial expansion relied on the increased use of gunpowder, cannons, and arm trade to establish large empires in both hemispheres. I'm sure that many of you talked during this period about Islamic gunpowder empires. They get that name for a reason. They use guns. Okay, here's a list of empires from this time period that used guns. It wasn't just those Islamic empires, but the Ming and Qing both used guns. The Japanese used guns. Obviously, the Ottomans, the Safavids, and the Mughals, the Islamic gunpowder empires, used guns. And the Europeans, Spain, Portugal, the Dutch, the British, the Russia, they all used guns too. So it's not should, shouldn't be a shocker, but uh, as gunpowder travels from China to the rest of the world, guns are refined and made more efficient. The Spanish are really seen as... Um, 
thrusting guns into uh, a formidable place in weaponry with their uh, invention of the Harkavis, which of course was used during the Reconquista and then is going to be used in the New World to scare the bejesus out of the Indians and uh, eventually take, take them over. Now, here um, is a list of places that did not traditionally have guns, Africa and the Americas, and that's uh, one of the reasons why they end up in the position that they're in towards the end of this period. Okay, to continue with this Roman numeral, empires dramatically increased in size because of their superior weapons. So we've already kind of indicated that Europe was able to take over other places and uh, make inroads to other places because of their guns. Um, but they also set up trading post empires because they can set up a trading post and keep other people away with their guns. The Dutch do it, uh, the Spanish do it, uh, all, all because of these guns, they're, they're able to wage warfare and intimidate uh, native populations. Now, land-based empires uh, that grew tremendously during this time would have been uh, the Qing in China, the Ottoman, the Mughals, and Russia. These were empires that didn't uh, use a lot of trading posts. They didn't seek to expand in different geographic areas of the world. They just sought to expand their already um, emerging empires. So if you want sort of a geographic look, here's a nice map that I swiped from Freemanpedia, uh, which is a great resource if you ever need a AP World History help. Um, and this sort of shows you uh, towards the later part of this period just how big those empires were. Of course, the Aztec there and the Inca there are going to be overtaken by the Spanish. Um, after their conquests. Okay, moving right along, key concept 4.3, Roman numeral 3 says, competition over trade routes, state rivalries, and local resistance all provided significant cha challenges to state consolidation and expansion. Shocker, as these places all expand, they compete with and fight with one another. So you're going to see uh, conflicts between the Ottomans and the Safavids uh, in what we would now consider the Middle East. Uh, uh, the Ottomans are able to um, overcome that that one and they they come out of that conflict victorious you also see fights between the ottomans and the venetians who initially had a pretty positive trade relationship however um, oftentimes as one side gets too greedy you start to see uh, relations break down and then you get a series of wars the ottomans were successful in these wars as well um, the Thirty Years' War was uh, a particularly gruesome war that was waged for a 30-year period between 1618 and 1648 in Europe, which was uh, one of the results of the Protestant Reformation. It was a religious war between Protestants and Catholics that really had no winner. I can tell you who the loser was, though. Everybody. Now, let's talk about the Omani and the European ri rivalry in the Indian Ocean for a second. I don't want you to forget about Indian Ocean trade. We talked about how there was um, a conflict in the Mediterranean between the Ottoman and the Venetians. Um, but the Omani are a particularly strong Islamic state that's on the, that is on the Indian Ocean in the pre present uh, in the area of the present day Oman, which is why they're called Omani, and uh, they don't like European uh, incursion into the Indian Ocean, and so they have a series of rivalries. But the Omani, I just kind of want to point them out uh, because they are a power on the Indian Ocean that is uh, formidable during the time period. And then you also see Japan try and invade Korea. Of course, that fails because the Koreans have the most awesome boats ever with spikes on top of them, turtle ships, but um, you do see conflict in various areas throughout the world. Okay, so with that said, that's how we reach Nirvana. It's a nice short one, but that's a, but it should be because the first one was really, really long. Okay, take care, everybody. Good luck.